Here in this video, we're going to take a look at one of the tools Element Estimating has that probably will save you the most time in the long run. It's a little bit of work to set up, but in the long run, work area templates will save you uh, many, many hours of estimating. They'll also save you many, many mistakes, and they're an indispensable tool for training new estimators, for standardizing the way work gets estimated, and most importantly, to make sure that you don't repeat the same mistakes over and over again with different people uh, until each person learns a lesson. So a really common problem, the owner does the estimating, uh, you know, you live and learn over years by way of mistakes, uh, what things you might have missed and forgotten. And so in your head is all those things, but then you hire a new estimator on and chances are excellent. They'll go ahead and make those same mistakes you made while they learn. And over years and over multiple estimators, the cost of those mistakes are probably staggering, likely hundreds of thousands of dollars or not more uh, across all the estimates that, that have had stuff forgotten. Work area templates are not only a way of making estimating much faster, but a way of eliminating those forgotten items or at least repeating the past mistakes of other estimators so that every estimator is thinking about building an aspect of the job the same way uh, with the same items. And when we do forget things, we come back, we put it in our template so that we never forget it again. In summary, a template is kind of like a checklist for estimating. And let's take a look at what a template might look like. So first of all, you can find templates under your item catalog and under the template section. You need to have first set up some labor equipment materials and subs before you can make templates. All templates are, are a group or collection of labor equipment materials and subs related to doing some kind of work. So for example, I'm going to bring up a paver driveway template here. Now I'm going to start with a template name, paver driveway, and if you want a little description here of what it is. The key part about templates are in this tab, the items tab. If you click the items tab, here you'll see a list of all the labor equipment materials and subs required to build a paver driveway. And all I've done to build this list is go over here and hit add items. And I've added the items from my labor list, my equipment list, my material list that I need to put this template together. Once I've got all my items, I hit the X button and I now have a list of everything that's required to think about for the pavers. Now here I can save myself a lot of mistakes because now every estimator is remembering to think about all these things as they, in their mind, build the price for this paver driveway. I may not need a disposal bin on every paver job. I might not need sealer on every paver job, but I'm going to put those things in the template so every estimator thinks about them every single time. It's easy to take out of the estimate, but without it, there's a good chance I may forget it. So right now what I have is a really useful checklist for estimating, basically saying anytime we estimate a, drive, a paver driveway, I need you to think about all these things here. We can take it one step further though and also help the estimator calculate how much of these things here. So here's an example, for instance, of gravel granular A. I'm going to go over here to the production rate calculator and I'm going to say something like I need 3.7 ton every 100 square feet. What that'll allow my estimator to do then is to key in on an estimate that there's a thousand square feet and it can now do the calculation knowing that if I need 3.7 ton of every 100 square feet, then I'm going to need 37 ton for 1,000 square feet. They'll do that calculation, obviously, automatically when we get to estimating. At this point, we're just establishing our rates. So brick sand, 450 square feet per ton of brick sand. For my crew, if you want, you can even specify a labor rate. That's 11 finished square feet per hour of work, which is basically going to take me to a, a thousand square foot driveway job is going to take about uh, 90 man hours of work. If that if that's your ratio, then then that'll work. It's a good guideline for new estimators. I certainly don't recommend uh, sticking to production rates for building. Every driveway is different. The size, the shape, the number of cuts, how accessible it is, um, where the vendor is, where the driveway is, how far away we have to drive. There's so many variables when it comes to building a driveway. It's really difficult to just boil it down to, yeah, we can do so many square feet an hour. Even if you were to break this down by how much time to excavate, how much time to put in the base, and how much time, I don't think you're going to get a very accurate number from that because, again, all those other variables still apply. Um, 
How do, maybe the excavator just dug it out too deep by accident. Well, that's going to throw off your rates a lot. It's a good guideline, but remember every driveway is different. But if you want a starting point, you can certainly set up production rates. What I have now then is an estimate or a work area template with production rates that I can use for estimating. Before I do an estimate though, there's two other things I want to set up. One is notes. So I'm going to click to the notes. And what I want to put here under the customer notes section is the description I want to appear on our estimates for the customer every time we do a driveway. So that'll save me from entering this every single time. And then down here in the crew notes, I'm going to do the same thing, but these are going to be the notes for the crew. So these ones are going to show up on our customer proposals. And these notes are going to show up on our job planners for our crews. And by putting them in the estimate template, every time I add this template to an estimate, these things are automatically going to come over. So again, saves me tons of time. And estimator to estimator, make sure everybody's giving the customer and the crews a consistent package. Next thing, you can do categories. So you can actually also uh, filter your lists by category. So if I want this one, for example, to show up in my... Um, Unilock pavers category and my Unilock category and I have another category here called pavers. I'll just tick all those on and anytime I'm estimating and I'm filtering by those categories, this template will show up. Once you've got that, let's see how that looks in an estimate. And then we'll show you some other couple samples. So I'm going to go into an estimate. So here I've got a job with no prices just yet. If this job needed a paver driveway, then I'm going to use the template that we just built to get it done. I'm going to go add work area first, and I'm going to add a work area called the driveway. Cost code, hardscaping. Hit OK. Now the driveway is created. I go over here and I hit add items and templates. But instead of adding all the items and equipment and materials one by one, I'm going to go over here to the templates menu. And I'm going to find that paver driveway template we just built, and I'm going to click add. Everything we just built from there, put in that paver template, comes across into my estimate. So this is where we're thinking about this like a checklist. Now I've got all the labor, all the equipment, all the materials that I need to think about every time we do a driveway. We'll close this panel down, and now we can quantify everything. But if you set up production rates, this is where even quantifying stuff gets faster as well. There's a calculator button now beside all the quantities. These don't appear normally. They only appear when you use templates. So I can now click this and say it's a thousand square foot driveway and it'll calculate that should take you about 91 man hours. Now, of course, I can change that, but now I've got that set up. So let's say I've got a truck for 30 hours. I've got skid steer for three days. I've got disposable. I could have set up a calculator on anything. It's up to you what you want to use as calculators. The gravel, I showed the calculator there. So let's use it. We'll hit the calculator. It says it's 100, 100 square feet per 3.7 tons. So if I use a thousand square feet, I need 38 tons. So I'll round it up to the nearest brick sand again, thousand square feet. We're going to need three ton edge restraint edge restraint. I'm going to do by linear feet. If I click the, the uh, calculator here, it says I need one spike every 1.25 linear feet. So if I have 80 linear feet, it tells me I need 64 spikes. I'll need 80 linear feet of snap edge, uh, polymeric sand. I get about 90 square feet per bag. So it guesstimates I'm going to need 12 bags. And then sealer. Now let's say this driveway didn't require sealer. We could leave it in here at zero, or I could just hit the trash bin and get rid of that one item. So now that disappears. Now the only thing I didn't put in my template, and the important thing not to forget, is the paver itself. Because I don't know what paver the client's going to pick. And I don't want to have a template for every single... So as an estimator here, I'm going to go into my materials, and I'm going to pick the paver that I would like. close that down and then put the square footage in and I need to build in a bit of waste and now I've got my price for the driveway now the other great thing is I've already set up because they were in the template not only the price and the quantities but I've set up my client notes that came in from the template and I've also set up crew notes that came in from the template so in 60 seconds or less of actually building a driveway estimate I can go to the print button and hit customer proposal and I will have a printed proposal for the customer that includes my logo, terms and conditions, the driveway price, a description of the driveway, and all my default terms and conditions that are set up in my standard estimate default terms and conditions. So again, very quickly produce a proposal. I can also print a crew planner. So when I want the crew, if we win this job and I want the crew to get it done, 
I'll go job planner. I'll hit print. And not only will I have a list of all the items for the cruise, I'll also have that small tool checklist and anything I put in there as well. So all this stuff is done for me literally in 30 seconds or less. Click the analysis button and I'll also be able to analyze the bid in terms of profitability, etc. So that's one way to use templates in terms of construction. I'm going to flash back now, I'll save this estimate and I'll flash back to my templates list and I'll look at something else, maybe a mowing template. Now I've created three mowing templates, one for an average lawn, a, a difficult lawn and an easy lawn. So we'll open an average lawn. Now my template for lawn cutting is a lot simpler. All I need is a crew and a trailer, but I can in my production rates put how many square feet I can cut per hour or how many square feet per half an hour, however you want to put in your ratio. And again, that'll help estimators so that when they add this template, not only will my generic specifications for lawn mowing, et cetera, automatically come in the estimate, but the estimator can also measure the site and then say it's 42,000 square feet. And this will tell us approximately how many man hours it'll take him to cut that area. Another example for templates would be a snow template. So if I open a, a snow plow template, same thing, very similar to lawn. In the items, I have a little more variables. I've got a snow plow, I've got a truck, and I've got salt. Again, I can set up a production rate, it takes us 0.8 acres for every hour of plowing. And for the salt, I might have something like one acres every half a ton. And now I've got some ratios set up, not just for the labor, but for materials as well. I'll give you one more template example that often comes up. Uh, people commonly ask for what about, is there a way to assign labor factors and element to materials? And there really isn't. You can't just put labor on a material because the type of labor would dictate what it costs. And, um, and you can't really tell your crews to do uh, work in a certain amount of time based on the cost of a material. So let's take a look at, for example, a planting template. Well, what I can do if I want to come up with how long it would take to install a garden, if you know it takes so much time to do a one gallon and so much time to do a three gallon, so much time to do a five gallon, you can certainly set that up as a planting template. Call it a planting template, go to my items. And here, all I've done is add the same crew one, two, three, four, five times. You can add it as many times as you need it. Then each one of these crews, I put in the description, one gallon, two gallon, five gallon, one inch trees, one and a half inch trees. Each one has a production rate. So one plant per 0.1 hours, one plant per 0.16 hours for a three gallon or two gallon, one plant per 0.2 hours for a five gallon one tree per one hour for a one inch tree. Now I've got these installation factors so that whenever I do a garden, what I can do instead is add this template and then using the calculators in that estimate, put in the number of each shrub and tree. It will correspondingly spit out the amount of labor for those shrubs and trees. And then I hopefully will get the right price on the job. Lots of different ways to use templates. Hopefully there's a teaser for you. Experiment with your own. There's lots of different concrete garden bed prep, um, garden bread prep might look like the construction uh, crew, the truck, a skid steer, disposal, soil going in, mulch. These are for prepping a garden. Lots of different ways you can use templates. Experiment on your own and they will be a hugely valuable tool in terms of time savings and estimating accuracy going forward.